excited to have you here today. Yes, and Ellen is on it already. We are recording these. So if anyone would like to view it afterwards, that they can. Um, so Sherry, um, welcome and thank you for doing this for the membership. Is there anything that you'd like to say initially to this group or would you like to just jump in? I don't really have anything prepared, but I just wanted to welcome everybody to this session. Um, of course, it's going to be very casual. I've never been a party to one of these before. Um, I'm not a boring, stuffy person, so I'm not going to try <laughs> to be one here. So please say anything that's on your mind. Ask me any questions you like. I'm completely open with you. If I don't know the answers, I'll just say so because I won't know a lot of things. I'm not on the board yet. So I, I will have a lot of learning to do and a lot of catching up to do if I do get elected. But I'm willing to put in the work. I've already been attending a lot of the meetings. I do have a lot of background on what's gone on so far. So, and that's kind of why I was encouraged to run. It wasn't exactly my idea. I don't think anybody in our community thinks that this is going to be a fun job. But <laughs> if I was already at all the meetings and knew what was going on and was concerned about it, I felt like I could really contribute and, and see if I could make a difference. Um, my Growing up, my family had a philosophy of no whining. Like everything was no whining. If you're not going to do something about it, don't whine about it. So when you're in the community and you hear people have a lot of concerns about this and complaints about that, my first thought is, well, then do something about it. You know, tell somebody, make a difference, um, get your friends together and write a letter or um, make some action. I don't really tolerate sitting around and complaining very, very well. So that's why I'm here. I'm very concerned about what everybody thinks. So uh, as we go through this, I will very likely ask you, what do you think about that? Um, and please tell me, because I want to know. That's that's why I'm on the board, is to be your representative. I have personal opinions about everyone, everything, just like you do, but it's more important what you think. So with that, anybody have a question to start us off? I have one. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. All right, just go with for it. Um, sure. This is just this is not anything of a new um, concern. This has been an ongoing concern for a while. What is your opinion of the partnership appointed board member position? Mm -hmm. It's a good question, and this has caused a lot of discussion on the island, and I think mostly frustration because. We know that the that the partners have less than 20% of the property on the island. We know that the development agreement has now expired, but it's my understanding that there is a covenant that permits that seat to continue uh, to exist. And the only thing that we could do would be to change our covenants to, to make that difference, to get that seat removed. But it was in October, I believe, when the board brought it to a vote <clears throat> to see whether they would put that issue to the community to vote whether to change the covenants or not. And that vote failed. It was a four to two uh, failure to, to put that issue to the members. And in fact, even the partners member was allowed to vote on it. She was one of the four. Mm -hmm. So, so I just, it's really frustrating to me. And I hope if, if we do get on the board that we'll revisit that and, and vote again to see whether our members should decide whether the covenants should be changed and whether that seat should continue to exist. What do you, and that's what I want to know. What do you think about it? Cindy, what do you think? I think it's uh, an old, old policy that needs to be revisited <laughs> and yeah. looked at. Yeah, it seems to be a conflict of interest to me. Mm -hmm. so. Does anybody else have an opinion on it? I'm just curious. Yeah, um, uh, Sherry, when you say there's a covenant that uh, that allows the, the developers to have a board member, is that in perpetuity? In other words, as long as Kiowa exists, even after every inch of their land is sold, they'll be able to have somebody on the board? Is that it? I, I wish I knew. I'm okay. unclear on this. Yeah, okay. No worries. No worries. <laughs> so yeah, I'll help I, share. I'll help Sherry a please, little bit. Please, Shannon. I would love to. This is a great place <laughs> to clear this up. Yeah. So in the Kika Covenants back in 2006, 
there was a vote of the membership and the, the covenant chain says the type E member shall be the company. The type E member shall be entitled to appoint a single member of the board of directors and shall not cast type A votes, which is residential votes for the election of other members of the board of directors. So right now it is in perpetuity as you expressed it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. It's in perpetuity, excuse me, it's in perpetuity until the members vote and decide to remove that board seat for exactly. the for the, That's for the partners. And Sherry, let me you, you mentioned less than 20, but they have less than two percent of mm -hmm. the property. Less than two percent of the property. Right. And they have less than two percent of the property by having one board member, they have 14% of the vote on the board. Mm -hmm. That's just not equitable. When they I have don't think 30, 40, 50% of the property, certainly it would justify. Today, it's certainly not representation of our members by having one board member of the mm -hmm. developer that holds only two, less than 2% 2 of the property. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I had to intervene, but that's something that's very close to my heart. So I, I'm, I'm glad you did ask because I, I feel the same way about it. It's very frustrating for me to go to a meeting and there's seven people up there. And one of those seven, I don't think represents the membership in our community. It's, it's not um, somebody that, I elected and and to have a full vote out of the seven, it has caused a lot of votes to be skewed one way or another with a four to three decision. And that that fourth person is the developer's vote. So that's been frustrating to me. And I, clearly, I've heard the rest of other people in the community say the same thing. Clearly, they're there to represent the interests of the developer, mm -hmm. solely the interests of the developer. That was the purpose of it, mm -hmm. not to represent yeah. our membership. It's to represent their interests. And they have less than two percent of the property, you know that that's just not justified. It's not equitable. It's 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 taxes without represent you know representation without with taxes. I mean, basically, you know, it's just not 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 the way. No, we need to make that that change. Thank you. Does anybody have a, a see it from the other perspective? Does anybody see that she has um, or anybody in that position would have a valuable role on the board? Is there any argument for it? Obviously, four of the members on the board voted to to keep that seat. Anybody else think it's worth it? What, why do you think they voted to keep it? I'm just curious. What was their logic? Did, did they write it down? Don't they have to write it down? <laughs> well, let me let me let me tell you because I, I'm the one that made that motion, and uh, mm -hmm. the directors that uh, voted against. Uh, basically, their thinking is we need to look at all the changes in the covenant and submit all the changes to the covenants that are necessary to our membership. And I'm saying that that's just a delay tactic. That's all it was, in my opinion. Okay. I hadn't and, heard uh, another this, comment during that meeting. This is a very simple covenant change. Very simple covenant change. Definitely, there needs to be other changes to the covenants. There, there's no doubt about that. They have to be updated. They were written a long, long time ago. But to submit a long laundry list of covenant changes, including this, will make it very difficult for people to understand. And this yeah. is one simple subject that you know, people will clearly understand. So you'd have to ask the board members why they feel that you know, mm -hmm. they need to review all the covenants. And, and, and you know, it's going to be a while. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be next month. It's not going to be in the next. My, the purpose I did that in October so that it would be put to the membership during this election. So we would have basically, you know, the election and the covenant change at the same time. And they felt that, no, we need to, you know, that's not, uh, you have to ask them what they, you know, what their thinking is, uh, why they believe they still, the e-members should still be on the board with that uh, smaller representation. And then I'm sorry, Cherry, I'm sorry to take you know, time of your, your time. <laughs> that's okay. you the, the look, the, 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 the uh, resort holds more than 10% of the property mm -hmm. and they don't have representation on the board. Mm -hmm. They hold more than 10% of the property, okay? So if you want to think about anybody that should be on the board, maybe should be the reserve, the preserve, mm -hmm. the, I mean, the, the, the resort. resort. The resort. Yeah, the other thing I heard as arguments to- um, I will shut up now. Okay, <laughs> the, other, the other arguments I've heard to keep the position is that we are going to be transitioning the ARB. And so maybe it would be a good idea to have their representative on the board to assist us with the transition of the ARB. 
And another comment was that this is a rushed decision and we should really think about this before we eliminate the seat. Anybody else have a comment about it? If we eliminated, if that seat was eliminated, would another, um, would that open up a seat for the um, natives <laughs> to, to be on the board? Is, or would, it, would the board just be smaller? I think that's why uh, Alex wanted to have that uh, vote done before this election so that there could be another seat for a community member. Okay. Thank Am you. I right about that? Th that it would, would be, be a decision member? of the board. That there would be a decision, you know, remain at six would obviously not be, our, you know, that that's, mm -hmm. that should be, you know, it probably would expand the board to a seven seat, right. you know, so it would have an open seat for the membership. Okay. That's, that's basically, so that, but that's a, that's a board decision. That would be a board decision, which I believe would, you know, would go to stay with seven, just so we would have to have an election. So a member at large, a member, you know, member uh, representative at large would be elected. Mm -hmm. All Thank right. You. Any other questions? We'll, we can move on. I, I have one question. Um, hi, Alan. But, hi. First, I just want to thank you for hosting this Zoom, Zoom meeting and running for the board because I know it's a lot of work. And, you know, it, I just want to thank you personally for that. And I just, the one quick question I have is, um, you know, I read on the posts and everything that, you know, all the candidates are talking about transparency. But what specific actions would you take to improve it? Thanks, Ellen. Transparency is something that all the candidates say they're going to improve, and it's very important Cheers. to community Thanks. members, and, and it's true. And I think there's two types of transparency we have to improve. The first one is among the board members themselves. Um, I think that there have been too many executive sessions. Um, there have been private meetings among members of the board um, that I think are, are never helpful and should never, never occur. We don't need to have any private decisions or private conversations. It should all be open and all the votes should be open. And any materials that are secured in executive session, it's usually legal materials, they should be shared among all of the board members. Uh, none of the seven board members should hold information that their other fellow board members don't have access to. I hope that would never continue in the future. The second part of transparency is the transparency from the board to the community. And I think a lot of the community has been frustrated because they have written into board members or to the board itself and have never had a response or they'll get up during a board, mem board meeting and express a concern and the board will say, thank you very much. And, and then they're like, okay, thanks. And nothing is nothing ever comes from that. There have been ideas to improve that in the last year. Um, there was something at the May board meeting, they vowed to have a communication plan and they wanted to have all of the concerns from the community addressed and then recorded and, and action plans developed for each of those um, concerns. Um, it, there was a board tracker, you know, that they were gonna have to do items and um, follow up actions, but it looks like that's just kind of fallen, fallen off the off the wayside. So I think we really need to do a better member, do a better job of having member communications. If that is a tracker, if it's some kind of a, um, a responsibility uh, assignment to different board members to research and respond to the community member, I think we need to do a better job of that as far as transparency goes. Anybody else have any comments about transparency? Is, this, is there anything you'd like to see happen specifically on the board? Well, I, I certainly agree with you with not having the private um meetings or i mean i and, and if it is private because let's say it's a personnel issue or let's say it's really sensitive right. but there should be some type of synopsis afterwards that is put out so that mm -hmm. people understand um, and i totally understand that hr issues and um confidential legal opinions they are legitimately conducted during executive session that's 
that's fine and that's as it should be. But we have seen the minutes of the, the board meetings that we've had all year, the things that they're discussing in executive session are not any of those things. They've discussed uh, reallocating funds in the budget, uh, bylaw changes, uh, conveying roads to Kika, uh, ATAX funds. There's been a lot of things that the community would have, should have input on that have been discussed. And they say what the votes are when they come back in the meetings, they will say the reason that the vote was had and this is what the vote was, or they'll say that no vote was taken, but we don't know what was discussed on those issues. Well, and I'm sure everybody knows that your background is, is not just real estate, that is law as well. And um, I think that personally, that is such a great, uh, background to have, you know, to, to to be on the board, and that you know you could help them, <laughs> and let, explain Thanks. that why we we do need this transparency. And to be clear, I don't have any experience in in development, real estate law, anything. I've only become a realtor since I moved to Kiowa because I got tired of sitting on the beach all day every day. But uh, but, but the legal background it just means that I. I can gather information and analyze it and apply the law that we do have and, and see whether the arguments that are being espoused are legitimate or if they have no basis. So it's just kind of a training and analytical thinking that all lawyers have that would benefit people on the board. So Anybody what, else on transparency? Oh, no. Oh, that's okay, Deb. We'll move on. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want to move on. If there's other things on transparency, that would be non-transparent. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, thank you, Sherry. That answers my question. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> All right, that's you, Deb. Okay, so what are the maybe the two or three biggest issues that you see uh, with Kika that need to be uh, addressed? in the short to medium term that maybe you'd be able to bring up to the board that maybe that hasn't been brought up to the board or that has been brought up but nothing's been done about you know do you have anything that's really in the front of your mind that for the homeowners or, or for or otherwise one of the early things i think is the type e director that we've already discussed that was the first thing we discussed because i think it is one of the most important things that we need to to resolve um Transparency is right up there too. We need to have a communication plan. And then the ARB is gonna be a big thing. And, and that is a giant, giant task that this board is going to have to tackle. Fortunately, we have developed a relationship with the town representatives. And I think it's gonna be critical throughout the next board term that there's got to be a coordination with the town. There are so many issues that are coming up as far as development on the island in the beach walker parcels and the parcels at the at the beach that the town and Kika both have to deal with. We've got the really current thing with Captain Sam Spit. Just yesterday, the town had a vote in executive session. They came out and the decision was that they are going to make a demand letter sent to the partners that, that the partners abide by the development agreement and convey the land on Captain Sam Spit to Kika. It's what the development agreement terms say and the town has agreed with Kika. Kika has already submitted a demand letter to the partner similar to this. And now the town is doing the same thing. So that's something that's going to be a priority uh, for, for both the town and Kika. Do you see any other things, Deb, that we think you think should be attacked first? Well, uh... You know, say, uh, a lot of these security uh, and safety issues are things that are also on my mind. Uh, the number of cars that come through, uh, mm -hmm. do we know who everybody is? Um, uh, it's, it's starting to get to be uh, a huge number of cars coming through and people coming through that, um, you know, I don't, I, I want to make sure that, that Keek is taking a, um, a, you know, a look at this to make sure that we have a, a good secure community and that that rules are being followed. Not the one, you know, Tokyo has certain things that they have to do, but Kika has other issues that, that they have to be concerned with, especially with 
the the number of uh, new uh, uh, you know with the Cape and everything, a lot of new people moving in, a lot of new cars coming in, um, a lot of traffic, and uh, just wanted to to get a feel for that as well. It seems like a task force uh, relating specifically to gate access would be a worthwhile task force to put together. And that would be something that we could do right away because I agree with you. It, it's just kind of gotten out of hand. Kiowa is growing so fast and we've really got to get a hand on who's coming on this island and who isn't. I know we have the technology to do it. We've heard um, that the technology is there, um, but it is hard to, to make sure that there are legitimate reasons for people to be here the resort is a public place so it it we are faced it's not as easy as it is on seabrook where there are no public venues so we can't compare our gate to their gate we have way more challenges out here we've grown a lot and i think a task force should be put together to study it thank you thanks Deb. you know and sherry that brings up another um another issue um actually that I spoke to Jimmy Bailey about this a, a few years ago. And that is, you know, there's such a large number of people who use the island as renters, as, you know, as guests, et cetera. And I'd like to see a way as an owner, I've often felt that we pay the largely, we pay the freight for this, right? You know, for the roads, et cetera. And I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to see what you write, what you uh, think about the idea of some sort of access fee, I'm not saying it should be onerous, and I can only imagine that Shannon could lose her hair just thinking about how one would implement something like this, but, um, you know, around uh, with different islands, sometimes there is a fee associated with coming onto an island that pays for upkeep. Anyway, I'd like your opinions on Number one, whether you think that is even feasible, and would you be in favor? Uh, I I don't know whether it's feasible or not. I think we can do a lot of things uh, that we haven't tried before, and I think sometimes it's worth a try. You know, let's see if if that is feasible, if it's um, functional, and if the money that we take in is worth the effort. You know, it may be that the money we take in is just a drop in the bucket and we have the money to maintain our our leisure trails and our other amenities and our roads already in our budget. But it does seem like with so many non-residents uh, using our roads and amenities, it does seem like they should chip in. It does, especially with, you know, the flood mitigation um, uh not to bring up yet another topic, but the, the flood mitigation issues that will keep dogging us, right? Just because sea levels are rising. And I don't claim to have the answer for any of that. I think there's probably a point in time where you say this property is always going to be inundated in high tides. But I do believe we'll all be paying more and more in that, more and more for that as the years go by. So it might make sense to somehow, I know we're not a tax, uh, Keek is not a taxing authority, so it's not like they can level a, an occupancy tax, but I do think it makes sense to to pursue that in some way. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a comment? I would love to hear what other people have thought about a, a gate access type fee. It's, it's the only thought I have being, you know, one of these accounting process kind of people is that especially at peak times, it's already so hard to get through. You know, mm -hmm. the line backs up sometimes almost all the way to Freshfield. Yeah, that if yeah. you are, at, at, you know, practically, if you're asked to pay a fee, even if it's, you know, five bucks, like they have it, I, I don't know how much it costs to get on Beachwalker. Um, logistically, we would really have to think about that, right? Because mm -hmm. collecting that money, right? There's all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. That's, That's my only yeah. Understood. I mean, I'm not, I love the idea. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just, you know, I hope it's practical. You got people not willing to cash, right? You got secure, you know, controls around that. And then just, you know, it, anyway, it, it could delay. Uh, yeah. It could delay. I don't know if there's a way to build it into the rental fees. You know, if you come and rent through the resort or whatever, there's an extra $5 or $10 uh, road 
road fee or something like that. I don't know if that's ever anything that could happen. Um, the resort already is is very generous to our island, and and I think that they have been a really good partner to us. So I wouldn't want it to make out make it be punitive on them, but it's something worth looking at. I agree. Anybody else on that? A question when and and this I think is Kika, or if it's Talon, you can let me know. Um, when the delivery truck, we have to pay the extra mm -hmm. gate pass fee for them. Um, where does that money go? Do we, do you have any idea? I don't know where it goes. I know that we do collect it and we've increased those fees a little bit for 2024 right. um, because we know that those trucks are a big um, burden on our roads that they are, you know, th those are the ones that are tearing them up. So we have bumped up their um, fees. Of course, we often have to pay those fees because there right. are deliveries. So Right. Um, but I can the help commercial you, Sherry. fees have also gone up. 85% of the money goes to a major repair and 15% goes to the administration of collecting them. So it is Kika. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks. Is that a significant number, Shannon? I think you did deliver a this. A couple million. Meeting. I think it's 2 million planned for this coming budget year. Wow. That's a lot. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, good. I, it's good to know. Well, going going back to, I was writing down the different uh, issues. Number five, I have is like the security and safety. I, mm -hmm. Two two things, and I know there was a lot of buzz on the the website, but um, speeding. Number one, I feel like that really hasn't uh, decreased a lot, and also. Uh, walking across Kiowa Island Parkway, and I'm sure that this may be the same on Governors, um, no, nobody will stop for a pedestrian, and the cars go so fast. And having come mm -hmm. from, you know, having come from a, an area in Chicago recently, and and in Massachusetts, you know, when there's a lot of crosswalks, and you know, there's not really all that many roads that come out on Kiowa Island Parkway in comparison to lots of other areas. I don't know if that's something that if you see, if there's a crosswalk and you see somebody in a crosswalk, you stop, you know, but it's not only do people not stop, they're speeding right by. And I think that's a function too of, of overcrowding of the island. We've just gotten more traffic. You know, it's used. To, I, I don't know that the speeding has really um, gotten worse. I think 30 miles an hour is fast if you're trying to cross the road in front of somebody going 30 miles an hour. Um, and and the, the, there's so many of them. There's never a break. So I think that's just a function of having so many people on the island. And I feel for you living off of Sea Marsh up there. Getting across that road is really difficult. And residents, I think we know to look for people on those side streets and we will stop. But there's a lot of renters and there's a lot more renters. And they don't know to look for right. you. Right. And they don't right. know that that it's considerate for them to stop. And I don't think it's feasible to have a, a pedestrian crosswalk on all of those cross streets and 30 miles an hour I think is a good compromise for a speed limit I've had people come up to me and say that it's a parkway it should be 35 I you know we should be able to get to our homes faster well they clearly don't live off a of sea marsh or on the north side of governor's drive trying to cross in front of people that if the speed limit's 30, they're probably going 35 oh. or, or 40. And if you yeah. increased it to 35, they would go 40 yeah. or 45. Right. So no. I, I think right. we've reached a good compromise on the speed limit. And I don't know the answer. I know they're going to try to create a bicycle crosswalk where um, Beach, where um, Kiwa Island Parkway is, you know, that real dangerous bike path crossing over the road right there. Oh, by the security? They're going to improve that. Uh, Shannon, isn't that right? Aren't there going to be some improved signage at that crosswalk at Kiowa Beach Drive? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So that will help. That's a really dangerous crosswalk right there. So and then as we there are plans in the future to change the uh, intersection 
coming before the first gate. So hopefully those bike paths will be um, more safe. They've closed that Oyster Rake bike path. So I'm glad that there's nobody trying to cross in front of the first gate. Um, so we're conscious of it, but there's just a lot of people and you just have to be really, really careful. Any ideas on how to, to create a better place to cross? You know, as, build a tunnel. As, yeah, as a, yeah, that's it. As a bike rider, I know where those tunnels are to get, yeah. you know, to get underneath. Um, you know, so I know that's probably not going to be a solution that's um, that people like to hear. But those tunnels are, you know, I know they keep multiple golfers certainly safe from having to cross the parkway. And I often ride them as I as I ride around the island. But I agree. I think one of the issues also is that um, the line of sight when you're going down Keough Island Parkway, which no one would want to change, you know, there's so much greenery and trees, et cetera. It, it's kind of hard to see that there's any pedestrians along the side because of the little turns, et cetera. So it, I understand that uh, the residents of Seamarsh in that area um, would be, it's a tough thing to get across that road. I, I personally, as I bike ride, I don't do it. I go, I use those, those tunnels. Ellen, is that tunnel feasible for you to use? Well, I mean, it's, it's, we, we do a lot of walking and mm -hmm. like when I had the grandkids, it does add quite a bit of walkage. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. so um, if I were, uh, if I'm by myself and I'm on a bike, yeah. And my husband and I use the tunnel, but it does add because it's a straight shot right to the beach mm -hmm. if you go down that first sea marsh and i see a lot of families doing it you know they, they, you know and um and and honestly it's not that big a deal for us you know we just wait or whatever um but what is more frustrating to me is if i'm doing 30 because you know me sherry i'm gonna do the speed limit you know and people are right on my tail and they're not doing 30 and, and especially the big trucks and the, 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 you know, the, the contractors and, you know, they're, I see them on their cell phone, they're distracted. Um, I just pray that nobody gets hit. And, and like a lot of us, you know, we're older, I'm not going to sprint, you know, across the road. Um, I just don't, I, I like the idea that there was some type of you know, and everyone didn't like it, but just like a, a system that showed you you were speeding and um, and asked you to slow down. And but I, I guess people people didn't like that idea. It's just not a permanent solution. You know, I think it is good to remind us that what 30 should feel like, you know, and we shouldn't get used to, to speeding down there. And, and a, like all of the rules that we already have in place, enforcement is everything. Right. And okay. it, it's, it's hard to get speeding enforcement to our Island. And it's it, nobody on vacation wants to be pulled over for going 35 and a 30. So it, it's really going to be a tif difficult thing to do. Enforcement has got to be maintained though. That is why have the speed limit if you're not going to enforce it. So we, we have to continue to improve that. And you know, see, you mentioned Seabrook and I've got tons of friends on Seabrook and um, I'll mm. tell you, they really enforce it on Seabrook. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes, they do. They're 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 enforcing it with their um, their municipal security. So the tickets that you get there, they're not like county tickets or whatever, you know, but they do not let anybody go over that speed limit. You you better put it on uh, cruise control when you speed go on control. Seabrook because they are very serious about it. And we would have to have the manpower to do it here on Kiowa. We're, we're three times as big as Seabrook is. So it, it it's not as easy. We have a lot more mileage of roads that we would have to monitor constantly like they do. Everything is harder over here because we're just bigger. It's much more easy to manage on a tiny island like Seabrook. Hi, Sherry. This is Joan Granulati. While we're hey, talking, I, 
while we're talking about traffic and stuff, I think the town has done a better job than it's been in the past. But one of the other issues that's a little pet peeve of mine is the site triangles. And a lot of the intersections, particularly on the governors, they're, they're terrible. I mean, you know, you have to get out far enough for anybody to see you. And, and the plantings always look very nice, but mm -hmm. it's not good traffic safety. I didn't know that's what they were called, site triangles? Yeah. Well, you know, but, but, but I know what you mean because right. I live off of off of governors myself. The landscaping is beautiful. So it, so it's got to be a, a modification of the landscaping, but you don't want them to cut down all those trees in that median. No, so no, it's, it's really going to be a, a, a modification type of thing. And I would think, you know, those landscape people are driving down these roads. They're turning onto uh, Governor's Drive from Surf Song. That's that's a difficult one right there. It's it, it's dangerous right there to see what's coming. And people are going 30 miles an hour on Governor's Drive or or more. So you do kind of take your your life in your hands sometimes. So I would like to see um, more conscientious trimming of the of the landscape out there at those intersections. Anybody else on that? I think it can be done pretty well. I have to say a couple of years ago on uh, Glossy Ibis and Governors, uh, they cleared out an entire huge corner because it's right after you cross the bridge. Cars would zoom around that corner. Um, I think the speed limits are a little better than they were. I think they come a little slower, but now at least you have a bit much better sight view of what's coming at you from the left. So. It can be done in many, but it would be difficult for every side street to, if they could clear it out a little and still looks nice, lower right. bushes. And that's the kind of thing that I hope that residents, if they see that the landscaping has gotten, you know, too high and they can't see, tell somebody, you know, right. call, call the, call Kika will get you the right department to address that. So that's another thing. Don't just complain to your neighbors about how awful, you know, you can't see anywhere. Please let somebody know. I know that they will go out there and do something about it. If not, um, they they should be answerable to you and you shouldn't just let that go. And that's where I think that the communication between the board members and the departments of Kika can be improved is being reaction, having reactions to the departments and having proper correspondence. Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> Sherry, this is Ann. I don't have my uh, video on. I apologize. That's um, all right. Ann Hi, Ann. Um, you all are talking about transportation and people coming in and out of the gate and all of that. Mm -hmm. What kind of thought do you have about uh, e-bikes and golf carts? Good question. And we've we've discussed this for a long time on Kiowa. I, I think this goes back to Seabrook allows golf carts, but I think Seabrook can do that because they don't have people that live nine miles from the front gate. So if you got on 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 the parkway and behind a golf cart and you lived in Ocean Park, you're going to be very annoyed because that golf cart is not going to be going 30 miles an hour and it's going to take you 20 minutes to get to your house from the front gate. So I think our island is just too big to accommodate golf carts on our roads. I, I'm sure other people will disagree with me. That's my personal opinion. And if we want to have another survey about it, we tried it one summer. I don't know if y'all were here then. We had a trial period for low speed vehicles on our roads because we know some people want them. So, okay, let's try it. And it did not go very well. It was annoying. You would get behind one mm -hmm. and they were slow and there were young drivers hanging out of them and yeah. partying. And yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'm glad we tried it. I think that's the responsible thing to do, um, but it didn't work out for Kiowa. So, e-bikes very popular i've never been on one but a lot of people love them they take vacations just so they can use their e-bikes on the beautiful bike paths and the beautiful beaches mm. but i don't think it's bad for kiowa to be different i think it's okay for us to say we have different priorities here we don't want to go fast we want to go slow we want our bike paths to be accommodating to walkers and strollers 
and people walking their dogs and people with children on bicycles. And we don't need people zooming past us on our bike paths. Same on the beach. We have beautiful beaches. We have beautiful shorebirds and people lounging, dogs playing, children making sandcastles. Um, having e-bikes zooming by is just not, it's just not cohesive with what we want the character of Kiowa to be. We want it to be a slow pace. We want to appreciate nature around us. We we have just chosen that type of lifestyle. So I just don't know that e-bikes fit into that lifestyle. There's, but there's one exception. Um, as we do have an aging population, I think there should be an exception for pedal assist bicycles for people with disabilities. I think that there's an easy way to manage that. You go to the town or Kika, to Kika and get a little pass for your bike to say that you have a documented disability, that you are allowed to have a pedal assist bike or electric bike. There's different classes of electric bikes too. So I think we should allow uh, that as an exception. And I think it's a very functional, um, easy to administer exception. Does anybody else feel differently about electric bikes? Yeah, Cindy? Uh, yeah, I've been on the beach many a time with the e-bikes and it's, you know, low tide and the beaches are full in June, July, and August. It's much more than they used to be 10 years ago. But the uh, low tide, maybe it's handle, it handles okay. But one, there's always a sound. I mean, you hear a sound. Um, and But when the tide starts coming in and there's kids all over the beach running and little kids running from the beach to the water and then these 12, 10 year old and 12 year old boys no, or girls on the e-bikes that aren't really paying a lot of attention and they're just going way too fast for pedestrians and children on the beach, in my opinion. So yeah, I would be very sad to see those approved on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I, I actually thought we had some individual approval for golf carts for older people. Do we not? I don't, I don't, we had some sort of grandfathered in clause mm -hmm. at one point. Is that gone? I don't know. I think the ones that were grandfathered are still grandfathered and they're not issuing any new permits. We, okay. know, Isn't that right, Shannon? I think you said yes. Yeah. So that's one, that's that they're probably not here anymore. <laughs> so. A couple, maybe yeah. a couple. Yeah, yeah. Chair, I, I totally agree with you on both of those issues. And in our neighborhood in Charlotte, they all of a sudden everybody decided to get a golf cart. And it is a mess. I mean, it and it's a it's you know, obviously it's not the size of the island, but it's a pretty big uh community. It's it's a mess. And um you know, accidents because kids yeah. are using them that shouldn't. My husband had to help someone to someone tip. tipped it over with four oh, no. kids on the yeah, and, on and the, it's, the cart. It's really um it's really becoming a hazard. So I I really pray. And we were on Seabrook over um Fourth of July and we were leaving the fireworks and so many people were on those golf carts. Oh my I mm -hmm. I I thought that I thought that would be a mess. It was terrible. It, it really was terrible. Um, it So I really hope we don't go that way. Yeah, one, one of my comment, Sherry, on the the, the e-bikes is even on the, on the bike paths now, on regular bikes, there are people that don't kind of know the rules. Etiquette, yeah. Pass people. Mm -hmm. uh, so people... You know, they just they're just doing things they shouldn't be doing, and um, they don't know, which is fine. So to to aggravate, you know, make that even more dangerous by putting young people that may not have control of the electric bike and the experience driving one, um, you know, I, that's something to be just. It would be worse. Of. Yes. Because they could be used irresponsibly. Everything is fine if, if it's used by responsible people, but but there's always going to be irresponsible people, no matter what it is. And you just right. have to decide whether it's worth opening the door to that or or whether it's just not even worth it. It's just not necessary. And if things are are okay without them. So yeah. Nobody needs, only the disabled, they need to have pedal assist and they should be allowed to have them. So unless it's needed, I don't think uh, it's necessary. 
Well, I appreciate what you said. In fact, I was going to ask you the question about e-bikes because it's not <gasps> been made. It's not been made clear uh, that um, some are uh, allowed or should be able to use it. Because I know when I use it, if I don't use pedal assist, I'm going at a very unsafe low speed. Um, and so this gets me up to a speed that keeps me up to, you know, with regular riders. So I really appreciate that. I would love to, you know, to have it, um, to have a sticker or something like that. Uh, nobody knows it's mine's an e-bike anyway. It's a tricycle and you can't tell and it doesn't make any noise and I'm not going very fast, but I like knowing that I'm within the law. So, uh, I really appreciate what you said about that. And I also appreciate, um, whether they're kids or adults on e-bikes, um, they can go really fast and yes. it's pretty scary for me, you know, being out there, just kind of going my regular speed. It's pretty scary. So I, I, uh, but, but enforcement's tough. Um, we actually saw a, a trailer of, of bikes, of e-bikes, you know, somebody coming on the Island and um, my husband stopped to, to ask the person at the, 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 the gate to say, are you going to do something about these people coming in with e-bikes? And they said, ah, it's not our problem. Um, so it's, uh, you know, there's, it's going to be hard to enforce, but I know when you say something, I don't know what you can do, report them. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. Cause it's, you know, we don't really have people out there on the bike paths giving out tickets or anything, but, um, but knowing that you're not supposed to have them is, and, and having people at the gate, maybe handing out placards or handing out things and the rental companies, uh, letting people know that they ahead of time, n don't bring your e-bike that, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. those things would another... all help and, and enforcement is, is, can always be improved too. We, we have the rules, but enforcement, 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 we're, we're, yeah. we're trying that and I think we do, do a do. good job, but we could do better. Yeah. And that's a tough one to do though. I mean, <laughs> you have to be there to see it and, uh, you know, short of yelling at someone and they look at you and whatever. Um, no, you I don't need to enforce it. <laughs> I have another question though. Um, about the ARB, if there's talk that the ARB would be moved over to Kika, do you have any ideas about how Kika would be able to handle this and what kind of time frame and, and how, um, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about, you know, the ARB moving to Kika and um, you guys and what all of us being responsible for? It should be done. It should be done. It should be taken out of the hands of the developer as, as soon as possible. They don't have to give it up. There's nothing that says that they have to turn it over. So thank goodness we have a task force that is studying this. It's a really hard job. They've already done a lot of work on this. Um, they've delivered, their, it's in phases, they've delivered what they've already accomplished as far as the priorities for an ARB, what um, their philosophy needs to be, the things that they would manage, the things that they would not manage, what things are town, what are zoning. Um, so the town is heavily involved in the ARB transition. But, but this is gonna be submitted to the partners and we're going to ask them to turn it over to us. So that's going to be a very interesting uh, uh, result to see whether they're going to relinquish control of it. Uh, I don't know, but we are going to be prepared. We're going to do everything we can to make an ARB plan, have it all written out, have what we want it to look like, and submit it and see what, what the developer says. What do you think, Deb? Do you think that we're... We're taking on more than we can handle by by using the oh, ARB. Not at, all. Kika. not at all. I just okay, want to make sure that um, you know, as somebody who's going to be on Kika, uh, how comfortable you are, mm -hmm. and you have the right resources, and mm -hmm. and just thinking about it, you probably don't know exactly about the resources. Well, maybe you do, um, but just just wanted to uh, just get your feel for that. But yeah, certainly it should be uh, moved away from where it is now. If it's done independently or it's done through Kika, it's uh, you know, it's it's an issue, but, um, yeah, it's a big job, but it, it's, it certainly needs to be, um, some, you know, handled so that everybody gets handled, um, or, or gets treated, uh, equally and, and that you have a, a very responsive ARB. That's the most important thing to say about it, that, that everyone is treated equally. Um, we've got a lot of talent on this island. We have a lot of people with time and experience, people that have worked in development, that are architects, that that have reams of experience, decades of work um, in these types of areas that we could tap to be on an ARB. We don't have to just rely on um 
on any members. We we're blessed to have, we call them previously important people. We've got some pips on this island. We've got some people that have skills. So, and I'm sure that they would be willing to, well, I hope they would be. <laughs> But, but we would approach them and say, this is something we could really use your help with. You can really make a difference and we really need your expertise. So that's what I would think that would be the members of the ARB, um, members who have previous experience in these areas. Sherry? Hi, Nico. Oh, hi, I, I'm sorry, I just got on and I'm not sure if this was discussed or not, but I'm just wondering what the latest is on the Captain Spitz. Um, um, Captain Sam Spit um, thing going on with the partners and the um, the town for, with Kika. I mean, has there been a decision made, or do you know what's going on? I'm not. Really we did sure. talk. A, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Oh, you um, did. Okay. But just just yesterday, the town had had agreed to submit a demand letter to the partners because the development agreement says it in paragraph 16F that once the development agreement expires, the land on Captain Sam Spit, both the, the, the outlying land and the undevelopable highlands will be conveyed to Kika. So the developer is resisting that and they have different philosophy about how to read that paragraph. Um, but Kika has already submitted a demand letter to the partners that they expect the development agreement to be abided by. And now just yesterday, the town has decided to do the same. They're submitting a demand letter to the partners that the uh, development agreement's conveyances should occur. So okay. we'll see what happens. It, they Sure. Partners can either say, okay, you're right. Here they are. You know, here, here's the land. Or they can <laughs> say, oh no, you, you're, this is going to have to go to litigation. So it could be yeah. still a long drawn out fight. Um, totally and we'll just long. have to see. Yeah. Great. But we're trying. You, and luckily Kika and the town are aligned in their philosophies and their demands. Great. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? I just have one. I was thinking about the ARB. Mm -hmm. Has any has anyone talked about maybe having, I don't want to say two ARBs, but like, I, I just can't understand why the developer would even care about being responsible for the residents. You know what I mean? Like what, what does it, what does it benefit them in the long? You know what I mean? So I can understand that they want control of what they're doing, but if, if we said, hey, listen, for the homeowners that are here, you know, we'll have the Kika manage that, right? And then for the undeveloped property or whatever, maybe it still stays in the developer's hands, but they have to go by the town rules and, you know, all the covenants and stuff. I mean, just, just a thought, because I don't understand the advantage. Why would they want that? You know? Well, that's the thing, though, Ellen, is there's very little undeveloped property left. Right. So, so that's... So so exactly. it, it really is. It, everything has been developed. The parcels right. on Beach Walker and the parcels where the Cape is and Ocean Pines, just, just north of it, are are really it. So that's why you would think that the partners right. would agree to turn over the ARB to, to the homeowners, because the island is owned by the homeowners now, by and large. Alex said it was 2% left that, that the partners have. I wonder what the finance is. You know, um, um, you know, when you think of the partners, you know, they're very motivated by the finances. So, and we all, anyone who's had work done knows you're writing checks right and left for the ARB. So I wonder if it comes down to financial. And I don't know. I don't have information on this, believe me. Um, but, but I would be very curious to see their book, so to speak. Not that they would ever show them, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, wh why would they go, go through this grief? I think there's got to be an answer. Oh, I think a lot of the community feels the way you do. That is money. Okay. I, I hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. And control. Right. And they can develop what they want. And they can mm -hmm. allow certain things that perhaps we wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. For good point. For their own buildings. 
So I hope the community really stays on top of this because this is going to be, I think, the major undertaking of this board's tenure is to, to tackle the ARV because it's some it's a huge job. You know, it's it is a giant, um, massive administrative uh, task. So we're going to have to have the staff and we're going to have to have the community members that are willing to to be on the ARB board. So, you know, it's kind of I'm worried that it's going to be one of those things. Be careful what you ask for, because you mm -hmm. might get it. <laughs> and then we'll be like, holy crap, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> this is a lot. But we can do it. Let's face it. It's just because we haven't done it before. Communities all across the country do this every day. Kia was a lot bigger. We have a lot of different uh, challenges as far as the development and remodeling and um, all types of ARB issues, but we can do it. It's on a larger scale, but we have, we have the capability to do it and we need to do it. Anybody else? <clears throat> This has been awesome. I think we've covered everything. Um, oh, we didn't, one thing we didn't talk about, um, flood mitigation, disaster preparedness, that kind of thing. Um, the town in 2020 had their, what do they call it? Their water uh, water management task force. And they came up with the six things that, that they were going to uh, improve to improve the flooding on our streets. And they've really done a great job with that. That's the $130 uh, assessment that we've been paying. Um, June, 2024 is the last $130 assessment for that. And they have accomplished at least five. The sixth thing is on Flyway uh, Boulevard. And you know, during the last flood that was still kind of floody. <laughs> so I, Shannon, are you still working on that Flyway section? Yes, ma'am. So of the six yeah. uh, flood management projects, we've completed five. Mm -hmm. The sixth project um, is two thirds complete. We have the last third, which will impact Governor's Drive at that flyway intersection. And it is now in its third redesign. Um, so we're hoping early in um, 2024 to get that last bit completed. And I think that just shows that that Kika is very concerned about flood mitigation. We understand sea level rise and we have to make a concerted effort from now uh, forever to make sure that we are doing the environmental studies, that we're working with the town to monitor sea level rise and any of the different types of infrastructure improvements that we have to make. If we have to devote another chunk of money, that was a $3 million project that Shannon was just talking about, um, but it accomplished a lot of results in reduced flooding of our roads. So if we have to do it again, we will, but that is going to be a big priority for Kika is to keep on top of the environmental changes that we're experiencing. The town is doing their part on disaster preparedness. Our world next week, they're going to have the St. John's fire department chief, and they're going to talk about disaster preparedness. That's a town issue. They're working with St. John, with John's Island, with, um, with other EMS types of providers to make sure that we are prepared for a disaster. So that would be a great thing to educate yourselves with at the Our World seminar next week. And Kika is working with them as well to make sure that our roads are passable, that flooding does not st uh, stymie our transportation during rainstorms. Of course, during hurricanes and floods, we're going to have um, some flooding that will come in and out. We have to manage it with our pond system, and that is being continually improved. They have apps now that they can raise and lower the gates on our ponds so they don't have to go out there and turn the cranks to lower and uh, raise the gates to manage the ponds. Constant improvement on this. It's always going to be a priority in flood management on Kiowa, so I plan to continue that in every way. Oh, we've run out of time. Anybody else before we close? This was great. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Shannon. Um, thank you, everybody who was here. Thank you very much. I hope this helped. I appreciate your support in the election. Happy New Year, everybody. Okay. Thank you, thank you Sherry. Thanks, guys.